But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the ages for our glory, which none of the rulers of this age knew. You see that? Satan was not expecting Jesus to go to the cross. This completely baffled, bamboozled Satan and his workings of darkness. Because look, it says, for had they known, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. This is what Paul said. Had they known what the ultimate overarching implications of Christ going to the cross would be, had they known that, they would not have crucified him. So this scripture right here lets us know that the God of this age, Satan, and the demons of hell, they were dumbfounded when the cross happened, when you came into the truth, when you got resurrected, when you got filled with the Holy Spirit, the same thing happened. The devil was absolutely confounded. This is his biggest fear. You coming to Jesus is the worst possible thing that could have ever happened to the enemies that are around you. All of the demons working through people surrounding you your whole life, everything was riding on the truth being suppressed about who you are. It was all leading up to this. If you look back, there was probably so much tension. There was probably people just tweaking around you. They could see you coming back to the light. That's why your whole entire life, chosen ones, whenever you were displaying your gifts, even before you came to him, we, we were all born with gifts. Even people that never come to Christ, God put gifts on the inside of them. They can either use it for God's kingdom or they could use it for perversity, for Satan's kingdom. Your whole entire life, if you look back, those dormant gifts on the inside of you would come out at times. They would be activated without you even realizing it. People hated it. That's why they always wanted to downgrade you. That's why they always wanted to downplay you because the demons inside of them that are on assignment didn't want you to know who you are the whole time. Didn't want you to be able to see how God was working in you even before you came to him. Those gifts in you were starting to blossom. They were starting to take form. Preliminary uh, molding, if you will, before you got filled with the spirit. And a lot of these people are not the family, are not the friends that you think that you had. There's forces that are controlling them, that are giving them these thoughts, like we can't let him do that. And they're jealous of you and they're trying to gaslight you and make you seem like you're this person that you're not. They're trying to skew your own perception of who you think you are. That's what's going through their head, but they don't realize that there's something that's giving them these thoughts. They came up with a reason for it, but it's not really that them that had the reasoning. It was the spiritual forces behind them that are planting these thoughts that are that are giving them these uh inclinations towards you you could have had you know a best friend you always had their back you were always loyal you were always consistent you would always stick up for them in certain situations where somebody could have been humiliating them somebody could have been threatening them manipulating them you stood up for what you believed in even if you didn't always do the right thing, you didn't do the wrong thing necessarily, if that makes sense. You remained neutral sometimes, but a lot of us, most of the time, we would do what was right. Even before we came to Christ, we had a natural disposition towards having a more wholesome belief system. You would stick up for your friends, right? You would stick up for your family. You were loyal to a fault. The whole time you were doing things for them, becoming vulnerable for them, you were laying yourself out there, you were being transparent, you were letting them know the inner workings of your personality and what you actually believe, you know? You were revealing your soul to them. They would always just, just wear you thin, betray you or to disappoint you. They would never reciprocate that. They would never have your back the way that you knew that you would always have their back. Even when you started to see these things come out, you started to see the character flaws in people. A lot of us didn't have wisdom. We didn't have boundaries, you know, the way that we do now. We would just kind of allow people to just walk all over us, hoping that our loyalty to them would show them over time. And then maybe they would follow suit and they would start to do the same for us. When deep down inside the whole time, they knew what they were doing and they had no intention of being the person for you that you always were for them. This was intentional. And these people didn't know that they were being controlled, but when you have demonic forces that are part of your personality, are literally embedding thoughts into you, are giving you these feelings, how to feel about this person. They're force feeding these things, these people that have no spiritual discernment.
there was this overarching strategy your whole life. Something was just always kind of pulling the strings on everything around you to just keep you entrapped, to keep you from really elevating to the place and the potential that you always knew that you could. There were certain restrictions and there were certain limitations that this spiritual force or principality or whatever, making you feel like you're going in circles, you're going crazy, stuck in a loop, and you're never gonna be able to break out. Relationships never working out, the gossip about you, the slander, gaslighting, you know, all of the narcissistic people that just hated you for no reason. They hated you for being genuine and authentic. You always poured your love into the wrong people because these narcissistic shapeshifters were latching onto you because they knew how to manipulate you. You have monitoring spirits watching you your whole life that that were feeding these narcissist information about how to approach you, about how to tap into your life, about how to make you vulnerable to, to give away things, you know, to pry information out of you. This was a plot the whole time. This is all part of the matrix system. There's evil, wicked powers in high places that have this overarching control grid over the world, over your life. And that grid is literally designed to put the children of Satan, you know, the ones that were never destined to come to God, put them under the spell further, under this demonic frequency. And the whole purpose of doing that is to use them to come against the chosen so that you never reach your potential, so that you never reach your destiny, so that you can't be the light to the world that shines forth and breaks this demonic gridlock over this world. Your whole life was designed to keep you far away from the truth. Like Even how I'm trying to speak the truth right now, there's a dude that's literally like circling the car. Like The enemy can hear when you're speaking the truth. They know. They know. It's a vibration. When that light is being shined, it, it upsets them. It, it penetrates this control grid that the enemy is trying to is trying to use to suffocate you, you know what I mean? Through frequencies and stuff. And when you're operating at a higher frequency, see this guy passed me like seven times. <laughs> he literally has no purpose. He's just going bench to car, bench to car, bench to car. He's not doing nothing. The demons in him can sense that the truth is being spoken around him. He can see that I'm passionate right now. He can see that I'm speaking a truthful message. The demons in him want to try to distract me. That's what they do. The whole world is set up this way. It's an energy. It's, it's a frequency. When you're operating through the light of Christ, it's a frequency. And just your mere presence disrupts and disturbs everything around you. Good and evil, it's not an impersonal energy. All evil in this world comes from personalities. All good in this world comes from God, who is a personality. Jesus is a personality. So these are personalities in the spirit world that are crashing. They're not just random energies that are bouncing off of each other. There's literal angels and demons fighting. Like These personalities know that I'm speaking the truth right now. There's monitoring spirits working through the phones. They're working all around us. And when the frequencies are being bounced off of each other, and when there's a high frequency that is sharp and it's pierced and it's marinating with those angelic frequencies with the Holy Ghost, that holy energy just blasts all of the darkness going on. It sends shockwaves to all of, the, of all of the darkness. So I'm sitting here in my car right now, but the, the message that I'm preaching is literally sending shockwaves to everything around me because the spirit realm and the frequencies go outside of the physical confinements of this car. And when you come into this truth, you can start to see the synchronization, to see how everything is wired up in the spirit realm. And once you know how to maneuver, how to not let these devils disrupt you and disturb you and throw you off course, once you learn how to be stoic and stoic, sorry, once you learn how to really counteract, you know, what they try to do to you, all the ways that they try to tell you that you're crazy, discredit you, make you think that you're somebody that you're not, all of the witchcraft, you know, all of the mind control that they try to subject you to. Once you go through like a training season, training protocol with God, and he starts to take you through spiritual warfare 101 training, if you allow him to take you through that, he will show you how to be strengthened through this dark demonic world that just it seems like there's no hope when you are living outside of the parameters outside of the protection of god this world can easily easily swallow you up and render you helpless but god is going to show you how to keep your head above water not just keep your head barely above water so that you can barely breathe but to literally be walking on top of the water you can get to that point man and it took me a few years just to be able to even 
be like semi-consistent walking with my head held high in the spiritual warfare you know there was times where one day i was up one day i was down and it was just a continuous vicious cycle man but there, there's beauty in the struggle there's lessons through the pain every time you're going through something that appears to be like a tribulation with no end or it looks like it's pointless and it has no value you're learning something through that and you might not realize it until the next time you go through like that same struggle again then you're like, oh, I remember this from last time. And then you're able to overcome that and you're able to beat it in a whole another way as opposed to the last time where you kind of failed the trial. You don't realize that you're learning a lot as God is taking you through this spiritual warfare training with the Bible as your training manual, prayer as your battery, fasting as your battery. You have to realize the voltage that you sent to the kingdom of darkness when you literally went from bondage and chains to to freedom and deliverance you were finally able to overcome that narcissist you were finally able to come out of that narcissistic prison that the enemy had you confined in you burst out in the spirit it doesn't look that way because maybe you're just by yourself in a little house or a little apartment somewhere you're just getting on your feet financially in the physical world that's what it looks like but when you absolutely bust the door wide open and came out of that prison and got grafted into the light, the way that looks in the spirit, man, it's a ridiculous transference. Just like when Jesus went to the cross, it bamboozled all of the narcissists, all the agents that were on assignment. It absolutely ruined them. <laughs> it absolutely ruined them. This is their life's work. They were counting on, on playing games with you forever. And in the spirit realm, the angels were clapping. They were cheering you forward. They were absolutely rejoicing in the heavens with, with cheers and worships. That's a beautiful thing that happened. So you need to realize that that's actually what happened. When Jesus came to the cross, he disarmed principalities and powers. He made a public spectacle of them, triumphing over them in it. Had Satan known that this was going to happen, he would not have allowed himself to be made a fool publicly like this. Satan had no idea that this was gonna be the aftermath, that this was gonna be the effect, that his power was going to be absolutely broken. And the idea here is that God, through the events of the cross, he divested all of the powers of these principalities because before Christ went to the cross, these rulers were ruling uncontested. There was no threat to their power structure. I mean, the prophets came through and gave a foreshadowing of the Messiah to come that was going to stomp on the, the devil's neck there was the prophecies, but nobody knew when that was actually going to be fulfilled. So Satan was counting on having that rule continued uncontested. On the cross, he broke the power of sin, but that doesn't mean he broke the presence of sin. So we still have to stay in that dominion and stay away from sin. If we continue on into sin, we won't embody the victory that happened on that cross. The ultimate purpose of Christ's incarnation was the destruction of the devil and deliverance from the fear of death. And as much then as the children have partaken of flesh and blood, he himself likewise shared in the same, that through death he might destroy him who had the power of death, that is, the devil, and release those who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. So the destruction of Satan does not mean that he is completely annihilated yet. His power is curbed to those who are invested in Christ and follow him. When you came to Christ, a huge transcendence happened in you and in the spirit realm. It's time to bring what's already done in heaven into the physical, into your reality. The enemy's still gonna try and make you think that you're not who you are. He's still gonna try and make things look a certain way. You know, these narcissists are still gonna gaslight you and make you think that you're a narcissist. They're gonna project all their stuff onto you just like they've always done. Nothing's changed, man. The enemy has the same tricks. He's still gonna do that. Sometimes you're gonna question, oh, am I the narcissist? The enemy likes to play tricks on your mind. Be alert. The enemy's gonna do the same old stuff. You know, the intensity might increase a little bit, but that's just God allowing that. And he's showing you that you gotta increase the intensity of your prayer life, the time that you put into the, his word, how fervently that you're seeking him. He's allowing the enemy to do these things to you because he's showing you that you got to increase your intensity and your hunger and thirst for him for the days that are to come. He's using the enemy to sharpen you, to pull that greatness out of you that was always destined for you. And you will reach your destiny.
There's no doubt about it. It's time to just take heed to what the word of the Lord is saying. Really taking our obedience, sacrificing our time for the Lord to a whole nother level. Because man, here we go again. We're coming right back down to the to the pagan holiday season in, in the winter solstice. So there's going to be a lot of rituals going on, you know, in October all the way through March. There's going to be a lot of pagan activity and witchcraft that's going to be targeted towards you and just, you know, Christians in general. So we got to be alert, man. We got to stay awake. You will overcome. You will persevere. You always do. You always will. The fact that you're still here right now proves that you have overcome 100% of your challenges. Stay up out here, all right? And always remember that Jesus is king. I'll see you next time.